people are comparing themselves a lot to this version of other people they're seeing online, like we've been saying. So that that often comes up in in sessions with with teens because I I can't believe just like the power and technology of filters on Instagram, like the way they can change uh, like an image, like uh, like facial features and the way that people look or or whatnot. So not only do do a lot of teens come into the program maybe having a like a lesser view of themselves because of what they're seeing online and because there's that expectation that they need to look a certain way behave a certain way that a lot of the times we'll we'll be looking at or focusing on aspects relating to maybe low self-esteem or building confidence or improving confidence and self-belief so not only is there that anxiety aspect to things, but there is a lot of work that we do to just help teens see the value that they have because they have a tremendous amount of value. And it's it's funny because we can look at teens as being, oh yeah, they're young, what do they know, da 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 da. But till now, when I have sessions with teens, I'm still learning an incredible amount of stuff. So it's just a matter of helping them realize their own potential and realizing the value that they have. So when we see those journeys take place, it's it's a beautiful thing to to not only witness but to to be a part of. Yeah, for sure. And like one thing I, I really thought about was that when you mentioned the filters too, you know what's most terrifying about those filters is something that when I was in school uh, at university we learned about uncanny valley, and how a lot of these filters these days create an uncanny valley feeling within ourselves. So how that can look is these filters are can can look so close to how you actually look. Just like maybe slightly better, I say in quotation marks because that's what people say. Um and that completely distorts how you view yourself outside of the app. You can look in the mirror after that and be like, that's not me. Wait, what what do I look like? It it completely changes people's perception of self that's why I don't use them because I I, I have enough of that <laughs> in my own day-to-day -day life it's, I, I avoid those filters for that reason um it's always something important I like to to mention with that it's understandable why people use filters as much as they do because when you're looking at even just not just social media but even movies tv shows advertisements you see like these airbrushed versions of people these unrealistic standards that you rarely, 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 rarely see people like that in real life, but it gives you that chance to almost to put yourself in that role, to to look like that celebrity, to look like that TikToker, look like that YouTuber. So mm -hmm. it can it can be a really tempting and, and also sometimes slippery slope to to navigate. For sure, for sure, I I, I definitely agree with you there. I, I'm curious as to how receptive the participants are to the workbooks and like what sticks the best. Um, is there like a certain thing that really sticks with youth the best when going through the workbooks? Well, the the reception varies a fair amount. It, it depends all on the youth themselves because sometimes youth come into the program almost, I would say, kind of like by surprise. Like they'll be referred by their parents or by other people. So if if it's, the person's not necessarily as interested or maybe doesn't have the time to, to dedicate to the material, then they might not be as receptive. But for those that come into the program and are saying, I have capacity, I, I want to do this work now, then they tend to be very, very receptive to the material, especially like the printed versions of the workbooks. A lot of teens find it helpful to, to use the version that's that's printed, though there are a fair amount too that have been able to navigate quite comfortably on their phones because they find it to be more, more similar to what they do in their day-to-day. -day. Mm. But I think just generally when it comes to, I would say the the stuff that sticks the most is probably it's this concept that we talk about. It's called the vicious cycle. And it's one of the more foundational aspects of cognitive behavioral therapy. And it's really just the connection between your thoughts, your physical symptoms, your emotions and your behavior. And if there's a shift or change to any one of those, and that's gonna change everything else as well. And that's that we introduced that pretty early on in the program. And that's where a lot of the aha moments tend to happen. And from there, that's when I think the youth tend to get more, I would say, invested 
in the materials when they find that connection and it kind of validates their experiences of oh I, I, I'm like I'm I'm not strange I'm I'm not weird for having these kinds of thoughts or experiences and really helping them realize it's it's a part of the human experience like Dr. Wendy was saying we're not trying to eliminate like negative emotions we're just trying to help people better understand them and and work through those times yeah for sure and that's very interesting you mentioned the the vicious cycle we we do talk about that when we when we do our presentations and we have our bounce back slides we mention that and I mentioned my own experience with that because at one point my mental health I was you know hiding it so so much it was starting to affect me physically to the point where I had back pain at like 19 <laughs> like 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 back pain you would expect from someone who's like 40 it was not mm -hmm. good <laughs> so I, I I love the way you broke down the vicious cycle and explained it uh because I usually use my experience in explaining it so it's, it's nice to hear a different take on it especially from someone who does the coaching um it helps it, it helps me with presenting it so that's that's really great to hear that that phrasing of it if you want to hear more stories don't forget to subscribe comment and like to support more youth by youth led projects visit us at youthspeak.ca where you can donate and spread youth mental health awareness youth speak charity speak inspire change